Hello everybody, video here for you today. I am pleased to announce that I'll be doing a live stream this Saturday, January 22nd at 2 p.m. Eastern Time called The Curse of Oak Island No Cap Recap of the Season So Far. Starting with a brief history of the island, beginning with the discovery of the money pit and the major finds over the 225 plus year history of the treasure and history search. Bring questions and theories. If you cannot attend the live stream, you can submit questions and theories to CoachSteveMoney at gmail.com. Like all my live streams, it will be left up on YouTube for further viewing. Also on Twitch, but those stay up only 14 days unless you're a higher level streamer. Those crazy kids on the Twitch. This is No Cap Recap of the January 18th, 2022, Season 9, Episode 11 of The Curse of Oak Island called Boatload of Clues. If you missed my recap of Episode 10, there's a link to it in the upper right. Let's get into it. There is an island in the North Atlantic where people have been looking for an incredible treasure for more than 225 years. In the Money Pit area, the team starts drilling borehole A13, hoping to intersect the same open area underground that released a bunch of compressed air when they drilled into it on last week's show at the AB13 location. As part of their grid pattern borehole project to determine the best locations for four 10-foot wide steel line shafts, the team is following information provided recently by the company that did seismic scanning in 2018. When they fed the data into new software, it revealed a tunnel that starts around the A13 area and intersects the C1 shaft in which a camera filmed what looked like gold a few years ago, and the tunnel ends to the west in a square 12 by 12 foot chamber. They did not include a grid image on this week's episode, but you boys got ya. A13 would be located right here, two and a half feet north of the AB13 location last week. So they are this week they are right up here. And then as you can see, that tunnel goes goes that way through here and intersects with that C1 borehole. In the swamp, metal detection expert Gary Drayton tells Marty Lagina's nephews that they are getting boggy with it, a reference to Will Smith's getting jiggy with it. They are using a long-range excavator to find the 200-foot ship-shaped anomaly, which was also revealed by that same seismic scanning. They have found many pieces of a ship previously. As teased on last week's preview, they find this piece of shaped wood. They also find another piece of thin wood and guess it's an oar or a paddle. Back in the money pit, the A13 borehole hits a pocket of air. The teaser last week made me think that Craig Tester was put it, pulling something out of this pipe, but he was just putting his hand into it to feel the air. In the next core sample, they find loose till, indicating man has dug there 82 feet down, and also eelgrass, perhaps washed in from a flood tunnel. The Truro Company found coconut fiber and eelgrass all around the box drains at Smith Cove, acting as a filtration system to keep out sand and debris. They think they have intersected a flood tunnel. The next morning, work in the swamp continues. They find another possible ore or paddle, which is shown right here, and another wood piece they think is decking. Rick Lagina examines the wood finds and tells the team that they have a marine archaeologist coming to the island to identify all the ship pieces found. That marine archaeologist shows up the very next segment. In his 60-year career, Dr. Lee Spence has found over 100 shipwrecks, including two American Civil War vessels, one of which was a Confederate submarine that is considered one of the most important archaeological finds of the 20th century. He confirms the likely paddle pieces. One of the bigger pieces that carbon dated 15 to 1600s is said to have easily could come from a ship. He also identifies a FID, which is a rope manipulation tool. 
He thinks the trapezoid-shaped wood was part of a step that broke off. They had not carbon dated that one as of this meeting. Gary Drayton and Michael John arrive at lot 32, which includes a part of the swamp. Previous lot 32 finds were a large rock anchor spike, large wharf spike, and a lead cargo bag seal. Gary finds a coin and thinks it's a British copper coin from the 1600s. The thinner it is, the more likely it is older, according to Gary. And he should know. Three days later in the war room, members of the team meet to hear the scientific data learned from some of the wood finds in the southern edge of the swamp, roughly 10 feet down. The trapezoidal piece is dated from 1683 to 1735. Doug Kroll thinks he has identified that piece as being part of a longboat used for traveling and transporting between the shore and a ship. The longboat shown is from a nearby maritime museum. The second sample, the piece of wood with the rope burn on it, is dated 1680 to 1740. And that's it for this episode. Next time on an all-new Curse of Oak Island, Carmen Legg identifies metal sheeting from a box that would be used, quote, only for valuables. And Gary says this piece found in the swamp is the kind of thing you're looking for when you are looking for a ship. And finally, this unidentified visitor to the war room mentions a treasure theory that William Phipps, after being granted rights by the King of England, found the wreck of the Concepcion, which was a Spanish galleon loaded with silver and gold. He returned to England in 1687 with 68,000 pounds of silver for the crown. He returned to the wreck with additional ships, but little else was reported as found. Taking into account his activities during this time, some historians believe that he had the time and resources for the Oak Island late 1600s, early 1700s workings. The visitor says that he believes some of the treasure from the Concepcion was secreted to Oak Island. The synopsis for this next episode, called The Silver Liner, reads as follows. The team investigates an incredible theory that could explain the silver and gold detected earlier this year in the Money Pit, while setting the stage for the biggest dig they've ever attempted in order to solve the Oak Island mystery. And that, of course, would be the plan for 10-foot-wide steel shafts that will allow divers to explore. Also note that next week's episode of Beyond Oak Island is the 1715 Fleet Part 2. You can find my no-cap recap of Part 1 of the 1715 Fleet, which was the second season premiere of Beyond Oak Island on January 4th, in the Oak Island playlist, link in the upper right. I'll be back next week to recap The Curse of Oak Island Season 9, Episode 12, The Silver Liner, and a link to that recap episode will be in the upper right in this video once I post it. Once again, I'm pleased to announce I'll be doing a live stream this Saturday, January 22nd at 2 p.m. Eastern Time called The Curse of Oak Island No Cap Recap of the season so far. Starting with a brief history of the island, beginning with the discovery of the Money Pit and the major finds over the 225 plus year history of the treasure and history search. Bring questions and theories. If you cannot attend the live stream, you can submit questions and theories to CoachDMoney at gmail.com. Like all my live streams, it will be left up on YouTube for later viewing, also on Twitch, but those stay up only 14 days unless you are a high-level streamer. Thanks so much for watching. Thanks for all your support.